If you have been looking for some creative ideas for the back cover of your beautiful children's book and your cover sleeve or sheet, then this video is for you. Hi there, I'm Evie, an award-winning children's author and ghostwriter over on eviejones.com and the creator of Children's Book University. I create videos specifically for children's authors, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my weekly videos. Not too long ago, I made a whole video on the five most common mistakes aspiring children's authors are making on the front cover of their book and what to do instead. So I went ahead and added the link to this front cover video in the description below. And so I wanted to do something similar for the back cover as well as our cover sleeve because I do get a lot of messages asking for support here as well. So first we're going to take a closer look at the back covers including lots of examples and ideas and then we will look at how to put together our cover sleeve which we will need for all our physical copies of our children's book. Now before jumping in I wanted to mention two things that many may not have been aware of. One, we authors can change our book cover anytime, even if our book has already been published. The only thing we won't be able to change is the title of our book because that is directly connected to our ISBN and of course our author name. But any other design element can be changed, adjusted and tweaked anytime. So that's why even if we have already published our book, we can still apply any of these tweaks I am about to share with you in this video. And two, a back cover and cover sleeve are not needed if we are only planning to publish our beautiful children's book as an ebook version. Because for ebooks, we will only need a front cover. That's it. Now we are ready to jump right in. What is a back cover and what is its main purpose? A back cover is literally just that. It's the outer back part of our printed book. Its main purpose usually is twofold. One, it is meant to show a short description of our book. This description is often also called a blurb. And this description is very important because that will let potential buyers of our physical book know whether or not our book is for them. Here we will want to make sure our blurb is both short and concise, hitting all the major buzzwords or keywords we have identified for our book. If you need any help writing the description for your children's book to put onto your back cover, I have a whole separate video on just that where I share the six main elements every powerful book description should have with lots and lots of examples. So I will make sure to share the link to it in the description below. And two, the second main purpose of our back cover is to show our ISBN barcode. Every printed book that is meant for resale needs an ISBN barcode. There are three ways we can display our barcode. The first example here shows a barcode with no pricing. So if we expect to make most of our sales online, like through an online vendor or through our own website, or if we are planning to sell our books ourselves directly to a buyer, like at trade shows or book fairs, then using this barcode will be enough. The other two options have something called a Bookland EAN added to the regular barcode. If we are looking to offer our books in bookstores, we will need to include this extra little code. And one option is to show a specific pricing like we see right here in the second example, which shows a price of $12.99, for example. Or if we don't want to commit to a specific price, we can also simply add a price placeholder, like we see here in the third example. I have a whole separate video that is all about these barcodes with a lot more detail, including where we can get these barcodes for our ISPNs for absolutely free. I have added the link to that video in the description below, so make sure you watch it so you can save the $25 the official ISBN issuing site is currently charging for the creation of such a barcode. So our book description or blurb and our ISBN barcode are usually the two main elements on our back cover. But what are some other elements we could or should be adding to make our back covers look as professional as possible. Number one is our background image for our back cover. Here I have essentially seen three main types of background options. Option one is where we have no background image at all or simply a spot illustration like this adorable back cover right here from Kristen Bell and Benjamin Hart's book The World Needs More Purple People. Here we simply see a white background and a spot illustration of a little girl along the blurb in those speech bubbles and the ISBN barcode. 
Option two is where we have one single full bleed illustration, where we essentially have a double spread illustration stretching across the front and the back cover. Here, Katie Hudson, Too Many Carrots, and Sherry Dusky, Rinker's Good Night, Good Night construction site are such beautiful examples where the front and back covers look very cohesive because the background of the back cover is a continuation of the front cover illustration. And option three is where we have one full bleed image that spreads across the entire back cover, but that is not part of the front cover image. Here, Elise Shirtley's little blue truck is a beautiful example where the back cover is its own little scene here. I talk more about this particular cover in my video I made about coming up with creative ways to illustrate our book and how to tie our story together visually because this particular cover is so, so clever. I have shared the link to that video in the description below. Now, looking at these three background image options, I'd like to share my first ninja tip with you. Something all three have in common is that even though we see illustrations here, the illustration parts right behind the text or blurb is wide open and not too busy, which in turn ensures that the blurb is still easily readable. And that isn't by accident. That was very intentional by the illustrators. So when creating our back cover, we will want to make sure the illustration has lots of open space so we have lots of room to add our blurb to so it remains easily readable. Number two, is reviews. Another element we can add to our beautiful book cover are reviews or editorial reviews, like we see here on Jennifer Fosbury's book, Isabella, Star of the Story. This is such a wonderful way to highlight some of those reviews we have been receiving. Here, I would recommend sticking to editorial reviews and reviews by authorities that are related to our book's topic or that have a recognizable title. Meaning if we, for example, receive a review by someone who holds a doctorate in psychology, we will want to make sure to include that title because it gives the review even more credibility. And remember, we can always add these reviews later, even after our book has already been published. Number three is our imprint. Another element we can add to our beautiful back cover is the logo of our imprint, if we have one. This is of course not a must and completely optional. Here we see the Capstone Publisher logo for Too Many Carrots again, and the LHC of my own imprint for my book Ego, Sheep and Knittery. If you have been thinking about creating your own imprint, I have added the link to my separate video on how to do just that in the description below. Number four is all about other books. If we have more than one book, then another fun element we can add to our back cover are the covers of our other books. Aaron Blaby, for example, showcases some of his other Pig the Pug book covers along the bottom of his back cover, prompting his readers to collect all the other books in his series. The back cover here in the middle is from my own book, Forever My Always, a book that is meant to be gifted to new graduates and those who are about to venture out into the world on their own to begin college. Here, instead of showcasing the cover images of any other books in the series, we simply see the titles listed of those other books. And the third example here is the back cover of one of Bill Pete's books where he showcases the cover images of some of his other books, but that are not part of a series. I love Bill Pete's books and I have collected almost all of them. And seeing the different options here on his back cover has certainly contributed to my occasional shopping sprees for his books. So if we have more than one book, this might be a great visual reminder or cue for our readers to check out those other titles as well. And number five is all about an author bio. Another element I get asked about often is an author bio and whether or not we should be adding it to our back cover. Here, when it comes to children's books, I generally advise to put our author bio directly inside our book instead of on the cover. I made a whole separate video on author bios, how to write them, what to pay attention to, and where in our book to place them to really make the most of it. I added the link to this video in the description below. Oftentimes, we see author bias directly on the back cover of nonfiction books. Here, for example, we have my How to Self-Publish a Children's Book back cover, where I have my author bio at the very bottom. Or Dr. Gladys Otto's nonfiction book, The Good Goodbye, and Jana Hensel's memoir, After the Wall. All those have an author bio on the back cover. Now, in the end, whether you place your author bio on the back cover or directly inside your book is entirely up to you. There really are no set rules here. These are just the distinctions I have been observing over the years. 
Now, how do we submit or upload our back cover when we are ready to publish our beautiful children's book? My biggest upload related ninja tip is that it's really important to know that our front and back covers are not uploaded as part of our book's interior file. And our front and back covers are uploaded as one single file as what is called a cover sleeve or cover sheet. So when we are ready to submit our book, we will submit two files. One, our formatted interior file and two, our cover sleeve, currently always as a PDF file. If you need help with the formatting of the interior of a children's book, I have added the link to my formatting video for you below in the description. Now the layout of our cover sheet or sleeve is often a bit confusing to many new children's authors, just because it feels a bit awkward to have the front cover on the right and the back cover on the left, like we see here in this example. But if we were to open a book and lay it flat on the table with the pages facing down, that's what the back and front covers arrangement would look like. So the cover of any of our printed versions of our book always consists of three parts. One, the back cover, two, the spine, and three, the front cover. The size of our sleeve depends on A, what trim size we have selected for our book, and B, the number of interior pages of our book, because it's the number of pages that will determine the width of our spine. Now, if you haven't watched my separate video on our book spine just yet, make sure you do, because there are some important things we will want to pay attention to, including whether or not we can add text to our spine. I went ahead and added the link to that video in the description below as well. Now, something a lot of aspiring children's authors have trouble with is figuring out the sizing of our cover sleeve. And the correct size is important because just like with our interior illustrations, we will want to let our illustrator know what size they need to create our sleeve in. KDP and Ingram Spark, the two print-on-demand platforms I usually recommend to my students and clients, actually have their own cover calculators. But just like with their interior page calculators, they don't really include the exact pixel or image size we children's authors would want to share with our illustrator which is why I created my illustration template generator tool a while back. It's a tool over on my evjones.com website that is absolutely free to use. So I went ahead and added the link to it for you in the description below. Once there, we will want to make sure we are selecting book cover for the image type and then make the selection based on what we are looking for, whether it's for a hardcover or a paperback, premium color, white paper, the trim size of our book, and the page count of our interior pages. And once we click on Calculate Dimensions, it will generate a table that shows all the important values for us. And then we will want to make sure to click on Download Template to save the template. And this will be the template we will want to share with our illustrator, which will help make the whole cover sleeve creation process much easier. Now remember, our cover sleeve will have to be submitted as a PDF file. So make sure that's the file format you create or request from your illustrator for the cover sleeve of your paperback and hardcover. Now, once we're ready to upload our book, that's when we will upload and submit our cover sheet as well. So let's take a look. The step where we are prompted to add our cover will look something like this. Now, just remember, Amazon and KDP change and tweak their interface all the time. So if your screen looks a bit different, don't worry, the process or steps will still be pretty much the same. First, we're going to select the upload a cover you already have. And remember, it will have to be a PDF file. Here, we will simply follow the screen instructions and upload our cover file PDF directly from our computer. Next, we will want to make sure the box is checked for the does your cover include a barcode question so that KDP knows our file we have uploaded already contains a barcode. And the reason I always recommend uploading our cover sleeve file with a barcode already on it is because it gives us full control over the design aspect of our back cover, meaning we have full control over where we are adding our barcode. Because if we would leave this up to KDP, we would not be able to influence one, how big the barcode will be, and two, where it would be placed on our back cover. So if the design aspect is important to us, we will want to make sure we control the placement by adding the barcode ourselves. And that's all there is to it regarding the uploading of our cover sleeve. Once our book is published, Amazon will automatically show our front cover as our default image on our sales page, like we see here for my book, The Girl That Makes Mistakes. So there's no need to worry that they will show our cover sleeve image in its entirety. 
and sometimes Amazon will also show the back cover thumbnail below the front cover image like we see it here in this example. When it comes to creating our own back cover, I always like to look at similar books to get some layout ideas and inspiration. So if you have trouble getting started with your back cover, make sure you look at what is already out there to help you get your own creative juices flowing. I so hope you found this video really helpful and that it gave you lots of insights regarding the creation of your own back cover and your cover sleeve too. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't yet. It really encourages me to keep making free videos for you just like this one. Here's to your beautiful and professional looking back cover and cover sleeve. Bye!